In this video, we're going to review some notation that you probably saw once upon a time, but it may have been a very long time since you've worked with it. And it's the notation that we use for pre-images when we've got functions. So to get started, we're going to let f be a function from a set A to a set B. And I want to let little b be any element in that target set b. We are going to define the set f inverse of b to be the set of everything in a such that f of a is equal to that particular value of b. And uh, what I want to notice is that this actually is a subset of the domain of the function, which is set A. And we call this particular set the pre-image of B under the function F. And it's important to realize that pre-images are sets, not necessarily individual elements. So I actually want to look at an example of that. So here is a function from a set A to a set B. And I want to notice that this function is certainly not one-to-one, -one, and it's also not onto. But what I want to do is I want to simply calculate the uh, pre-image of each of the elements inside set B. And so we're going to have these particular things that we need to compute. And I would like you to stop the video and try and compute these sets all by yourself. And when you have answers for them, turn the video back on and compare your answers to mine. So hopefully you did that. What I want to notice is that for the pre-image of 6, 1 and 2 both get sent to 6 by this particular function. Hence, the pre-image of 6 is the set containing both 1 and 2. Uh, 7 is missed entirely by this function, so the pre-image of 7 is simply the empty set. Uh, the pre-image of 8 is going to be, well, let's see, 3, 4, and 6 all get sent to 8. So the pre-image of 8 is going to be 3, 4, and 6, the set containing 3, 4, and 6. Uh, 9 is missed by this function, so the pre-image of 9 is empty. And the pre-image of 10 is simply the singleton set containing 5. Now, there is an important variation on pre-image notation that I want to address next. So what I want to now do is generalize it. If we still have a function going from set A to set B, so if that is a function, and I let C be any subset of the codomain B, then we define the pre-image of C in the same sort of fashion that we define the pre-image of a single element inside the set B. This is going to be all of the things inside the domain, so it's all of the A's in A, such that there exists somebody inside my C. Actually, let me call that somebody Y, because it's hard to tell C, big C's and little C's. So let's call this, there exists a y inside set C, such that f of a is equal to that y. And so if we go back to that uh, previous example, and we let C be the set, oh, let's make it the set 6, 7, and 10, that is certainly a subset of set B then the pre-image of C is going to be, well, let's see. Um, we can do this by simply thinking about each of the terms, in uh, each of the elements inside C and looking at their images. The pre-image of 6, of course, was 1 and 2. So 1 and 2 belong to the pre-image of set C. 
nothing got sent to seven, so we don't add anything there. And five is the one thing that got sent to 10. So the pre-image of C is the set containing one, two, and five. Now there is something that I want to make a note of here, and this is something that generalizes. In this particular example, our pre-image of C turned out to be the pre-image of one unioned with the pre-image of, let's stop one, the pre-image of six, unioned with the pre-image of seven, unioned with the pre-image of 10. And that's actually going to be something that works in general. So let's go back to our general page. In general, the inverse of a whole set is just going to be the union over all members of that set, so over all y's inside C, of f inverse of that particular y. And uh, this is something that you often uh, do run into in set theory type classes. The final thing that I want to do is look at a few conventions and a few other facts about pre-images. So the first thing that I want to note as kind of a basic fact about pre-images is that the empty set, of course, is a subset of all sets. So if I have a function going from A to B, the empty set is certainly a subset of B. And the pre-image of the empty set, well, there's nobody in the empty set to get mapped to. So the pre-image of the empty set is always going to be the empty set. The second thing is, is I want to think in terms of certain kinds of functions. If f goes from a to b is one to one, then I know that the pre-image of any element in b is one of two things. It's either going to be the empty set, if b is not actually in the image of a, or it's going to be a singleton set consisting of the element a sub b, where a sub b is the only element in A that is sent to the element B. And it's important to realize that one-to-one -one functions have this idea that the preimage is never going to have more than one element, and that's basically right from the definition of a one-to-one -one function. Uh, if f of a b equals f of a, and they're both equal to that b, then a sub b has to be equal to a, since we are assuming that f is one to one. Now there's one final thing that I kind of want to make a note of, and I'm actually going to go to another page for this one. If f goes from a to b is both one to one and on to, then what I know is that f inverse of b is always going to be a singleton set basically a sub b, for every b inside the set, the, 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 the codomain of the function, the set b. And in this case, we often abuse the notation and write that f inverse going from b back to a is a function defined by f of b is equal to a if and only, or rather f inverse of b is equal to a if and only if f of a is equal to b. But this is a slight abuse of the notation for pre-images. And so it's important to remember that this fact that this idea 
of an inverse function only works when the f going from a to b is both one to one and on to. And the more general notion of pre-image is something that we deal with whenever we have functions that are either not one to one or not on to. So I want to wrap up with that particular idea. If f going from a to b is not one to one, not on to, or both not one to one, and not onto. It's important to remember that f inverse of a particular element is a subset of the domain, and that f inverse of a subset is also going to be a subset of the domain whenever c is a subset of the codomain. And that ends this quick review of pre-image notation.